welcome back to our Cool Clubs headquarters here in Scottsdale. Today we are with our VP of R&D for S3 Technologies, Dr. Tom Mace. Welcome. Jack. And we are with our founder and CEO, Mark Timms. This is a very specific podcast. It is going to be helping us and you, the, the, the listener, to understand all about our robot testing. It's to cover all bases, to, to try and cover all questions that we might have. So we're going to start from the top and show you the robot that we're using. It's out of our Sunridge Canyon location. Here it is on the screen. Um, we call it Pepper because it peppers the pin or peppers the middle of the fairway, whichever way we want it to. Um, and you can see the table down on the bottom there. That's how we adjust all of our heights and, and strike positions currently. So this robot is in use every single day at the moment, all day, every day. And a lot of new products out right now. Lots of new products this time of year, but we're hoping it just stays in use all year round yeah. because we're going to do cool tests, right? Yep, absolutely. Um, we've got three full-time engineers, as it stands, uh, using that robot, um, going through very, very stringent test protocols and safety protocols so that they, they get consistent data out of it, basically. Um, then we talk about some constants of, of what we're using in the robot each time. So let's just go broad range, irons and drivers. What are our constants that we, we're using for, let's say, golf shaft, golf ball? Um, well, for golf ball, we use uh, the Pro V1. Uh, actually, we use the TrackMan ball, right? The uh, radar ball, because we do do some TrackMan as well as Foresight on it. Um, and for shafts uh, and drivers, we use our Cool Club shafts made by Mitsubishi. Uh, it's basically a blue board, uh, which everyone understands, kind of a very neutral shaft. Um, and we use a 60 gram version of that in the driver shaft. Uh, in irons, we use a KBS uh, 110 um, primarily. So uh, that's all constant, the same every time. We actually frequency match them and get the swing exactly right, and they're all like, identical. Yeah. And that's a uh, uh, shout out to Chris Ferguson there. He yep. is our He's crazy yeah. scientist, mad scientist. <laughs> he, he gets everything spot on for us. Exactly. Um, and then for launch monitors, we use uh, GC Quad, obviously, um, and also some TrackMan stuff. Uh, and those are consistently say exactly the same spot each time. Um, so everything is to do as much as we can to compare apples to apples. So everything's exactly the same. And Tom's in charge of kind of watching that. Uh huh. Yes. Um, okay. So we've got who does it. We've got where we do it. We've got the, the, the stuff that we do it with. Now let's talk about the specific tests. And I want to go into the driver test first. So uh, Mark, if you don't mind going through the names of the test that we've got. And, and, and the parameters that we're capturing for each test. Yeah, we, so we do two tests. We do the same thing with irons and woods. But um, for woods, we do what we call a game improvement test or our, our standard player test. Um, so we do nine points around the face. Um, they are three-quarter inch towards the toe, three-quarter inch towards the heel, half inch up and down. Um, and we use all those, those are the different spots. Um, and that's pretty simple. So we see where that's kind of where a lot of golfers hit it, you know, all over the place. So, uh, you know, it's useful to know where those things are. And, and then for a tour test, obviously, which is more tour player, uh, we just use the four spots right around the center. So quarter inch off center. Yep. More of a diamond shape. Yep. We're not going such so linear on that. And that's a 95 mile an hour test. And the uh, improvement one, we do 95 miles an hour test as well. We're also going to do 110 miles an hour um, for better players um, to see what that see what they do there. So really the intention and why we've named them what we've named them. If you're uh, a guy that's swinging around 95 miles an hour and you, you know, you're a little erratic and you're hitting it all over yep. the face, you want to pay attention to the game improvement test. Right. That's going to be most relative to you. Yep. If you're a good ball striker, but you're still in that 95 speed, you're going to go to the tour test. That's going to be most relative to you. Right. And then we're going to fill in the gaps for those higher speed players. Yep. Um, and we will touch just quickly, the lower speed test, it doesn't change so much as the higher no, speed no, test. No, the reason we're only going to go down to 95 miles an hour is because you can go down lower than that, uh, but it gives you the same numbers, just the numbers are all smaller because the distances are shorter. So it doesn't show us as much. So the 95 mile an hour test is good for, you know, basically all golfers, uh, you know, zero miles an hour to uh, 110 or so. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So now let's jump into irons, and it's a very similar thing. We're trying to keep our terminology consistent. So we've right. got a game improvement test, and we segmented the irons into game improvement. We've right. got a player's test for player's right. irons, and we've got a tour test for tour irons and you can kind of give everyone an idea of maybe a little bit about the heads that are going to be in those categories and then the tests that we're going to perform on them. Sure. So the game improvement stuff is all the bigger clubs, um, you know, more forgiving designed for helping help people play better, basically. Um, they're like the Callaway Great Big Berthas or, you know, Ping's new G430, um, you know, big heads out there. Um, the players category is a big category, right? Lots of things fit in there. They're not blades and they're not super game improvement. Um, you know, there's golfers that can be, you know, scratch players can play a lot of those players clubs. Um, you know, I'm not a scratch anymore, but I'm playing in the players clubs. Um, uh, but then they also can be, you know, 18 handicaps, you know, to tour players. So it's a big category and a lot of stuff uh, falls into that, that mode. 
Uh, and then the tour clubs are, you know, forged and forged cavity backs, you know, relatively small players. You really should be a, you know, you know, somewhere around scratch or close to it or you're, you're hurting yourself yep. at that point. So really what we're saying here is we're trying to make the, the, the tests logical for the players that are going to use them. Right. So again, a bit like the driver, if you're hitting the ball a bit more over the face and you know that you're in the bigger head, don't bother looking at the other tests. Just go to the game improvement test on the head that's that's right for you. Yep. Player's test is to note is uh, 80 miles an hour and two degrees down. Right. We do that because that's somewhat near the optimal angle of attack for that speed to produce decent ballistics at a seven iron. Yep, that's correct. And player's tests, we know, like you just said, we got really good players that are playing players. Right, clubs. so we do both speeds at that. Yeah. Right, both okay. speeds. Yep. So the 90 mile an hour test is going to be four degrees down. But we're also doing both impact locations because better players aren't too concerned about hitting it three quarters of an inch to the toe. Right, especially Sometimes. you know good players who <laughs> yeah. really want to see how your you know spin stays consistent and your distance stays consistent. Um, the uh, ranking we do the, the performance ranking on irons, you know, in general it looks at looks everything. Um, but the tour ranking, the, the tour information is really you know the better players hit it in the middle most of the time. You know, do they can keep consistency? So yeah, it's really looking at distance control more than it is you know distance and forgiveness. And and the tour iron. Uh, if you're trying to look at shots all over the face, you shouldn't be playing probably a tour no. iron. So we'd really dial in that test in for that player that's looking at tour iron. What do they want to know to, to advise them on a purchase? And it's about centre strike and, and like you said, all the consistency parameters that are, that right. are provided from our testing. So these are the tests we run, and uh, I'm going to hold off on showing our parameters just yet. I want to throw it over to Dr. Tom Mace. I want to say, okay, we have got thousands of golf shots. You can see how many points on the face we've got. Times that by how many irons and drivers that we've got. Um, we've got miscalculations from the machine. We've got odd golf balls. We've got all these outliers we've got to take into account, and we're hitting at least a minimum of six shots from each of these points on the golf club face. What do you do with that mountain of information? That's right, Jack. And, and you think about just a driver test, and the, uh, we're measuring on the GC quad like 30-some parameters there. You got ball speed, you got path, and all of that. We need to make sure that all of those are good numbers. And then six shots per location there, that comes out to one club uh, driver test, like 2,500 data points that we have to sort through we have to gain some confidence that all of these data points are good data points before we hand them over to Mark and, and the fitters to say, okay, these, these are the quality, this is quality data. They often call it data scrubbing. You know, you're, you're making sure you don't have any bad, bad things in there. And just to people out there, I think people have a connotation around that and they're in a fitting and the fitter sneakily deletes the shot, a good one or a bad one. That's not what we're doing. We are, we are looking at the confidence of the data to say, are we performing an accurate test? That, that's correct. We're using the, the statistics, uh, looking for outliers, basically, is, is what uh, data scrubbing is. And there's different ways of doing the, uh, the outlier theories. There's the interquartile range and like a Z test. We're, we're using a Grubbs test uh, that uses a T distribution, and it's well accepted in the golf industry. And uh, so we do it testing to a 95% confidence interval to say, okay, we're 95% we're sure that shot is, is in, in the mean for, for that uh, data distribution. And so we go through that, uh, uh, because of all those numbers, we've, we've written a Python code that, that uh, cranks through this, and uh, that's how we distill it down and say, okay, these are the good mean values or average values these are the good estimates on, on how much variation was there and hand it over to Mark. Yeah. So once we've got all that data, you actually do a really cool thing for us and you plot charts. And I think that's when finally us normal humans can look at it and make some sense of it. Yeah, that's correct. And, and it's like I always say, you know, we're all visual learners. And, and uh, if you look at just a, a giant uh, spreadsheet that's up there with all those numbers, uh, you can miss that something's amiss, and but if you plot it, it looks good. So we plot the uh, the offline and the carry, and uh, six shots each, and and we fit an ellipse that that uh, it captures how much spread apart those shots are. Essentially, it's so like a more intelligent. I say more intelligent. It's a it's a it's for use. A bit like you're being a, seeing a fitting and you're looking downrange and you're seeing all of your shots collect on the driving range. We, we're producing that, but 
with some um, intention behind it. That, that's correct because we're we're fitting a, an ellipse to where those shots land, and then we have access to the area to where they where, where they went. So we can uh, down the road perform uh, quality. You say, oh, this was this many square yards landing area and this club had this many square yards and what it's really forced from us is you know we know that you do your due diligence and we know our engineers do their due diligence in performing the test but it really allows us to sit down and say oh is what we're seeing here um it, with our tribal knowledge is, is what we're seeing here accurate you know are, are the clubs that are draw by us doing that are, are the clubs that are fade by us doing it are they doing the right thing off the face so it gives us a chance before we just throw out all this data the to mull it over and maybe perform retests, which we're at the point where we've had to do that multiple times at this point to, to create confidence in the data for us, for the manufacturer and for the user, the end user here, which is going to be people trying to purchase clubs with the confidence that the information is correct. That's right. We're, we're, we're not just testing. We're, we're really going through that data and making sure it's good. So on top of that, and, you know, the real, the real key to all of this is helping people understand all of that data in the most simple way like what is that going to do for my golf game or how, what, what parameters that driver or iron are going to help me play better golf right that's that's the end game yeah so we kind of simplified it down you know we've taken all this data and we put it into you know the format you got up here is you know are they draw biased or fade biased for drivers you know how, how are they just you know how far how good are they offline um right to left and and how much distance do you lose when you just hit them and then that's basically the numbers we give you. So we've tried to condense it down because we don't want everyone to see 10,000 numbers. No. <laughs> so let's run through um, the driver and the irons very quickly in terms of the uh, factors or, or, or areas that we're going to highlight as key, key performance characteristics of each club. And then I'm going to let you go into some more depth and maybe show some of the, to the bones behind these numbers. Right. Well, well, shot shape really is, is it draw bias or fade bias? And the way we do that is we set up the driver and uh, the swing path at zero pass, zero face, and we just see where the golf ball goes, right? So if it's a draw bias driver, it'll go left. If it's a fade bias driver, it goes right. And we kind of categorize that and give you a number. That's this one on the screen. It's 2.5 degrees left, uh, and you draw biased. Um, there could be more than that. It could be fade bias. could be a couple different things. And if you slice it, you want to look for draw bias clubs. And if you hook it a lot, you want to look for fade bias clubs. So that's a way to look at those. Perfect. Um, the outline performance rating um, is basically how far offline it goes. Um, you know, they've got two groups of people there. Ones that are looking for the longest driver that you don't give up much distance and one they're looking for straight. So we put both of those ratings up. It basically is the accuracy right to left and it's how much distance you lose. Uh, and that may be, you know, different in some cases on some drivers. And, you know, that, that gives people an opportunity to pick what's what's their real look for. What are they trying to do? Are they trying to hit as straight as possible or are they really looking for distance? Yeah. Yep. And then obviously spin launch is just a, it's a relative number, right? So, and this is relative to the speed. It's basically as we hit a shot in the center, um, you know, how much does it spin um, consistently, right? So uh, 245 is actually it averages 2,500 RPMs. Um, and that's just and 20, uh, 245 RPMs per degree of launch, right? So if you get 11 degree driver, it spins a bunch. Uh, you'd expect that, right? But you might have a, a driver that says nine on it that actually measures 11. And so it's relative to each other, which ones spin more. So if you're a high spin player and you worry about too much spin, you know, get fitted or something, you might look for the lower numbers on that group. Uh, and if you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of speed or hits up on it a lot, uh, you don't have enough spin, you might want you know a higher number of spin launch. Yeah, so it really is no good or bad in that arena. Nope. And for really for any of these these things, right, it's really, you know, how is it applicable to your game? That's what yeah. we're trying to say. Exactly. So you can filter these these things out yourself. Let's jump into the irons. Pretty simple one, carry yardage. Yep. Uh, center hit, carry. Right. Uh, and then a very similar thing with the irons, but we'll yep. talk about there's, there's going to be some variations of this test. Yeah, we do a performance rating, and we'll kind of run through what that is. It's, it's based on basically how much offline it is when you miss hit it off center. Uh, also looks at distance and some other things. You know, what, what's the average player looking for in an iron? Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what that number is. We'll do a, <laughs> a do tour that. one as well, um, and that looks at some different numbers, which we'll re you know, review in a second. Um, which really looks at, you know, if you're hitting, miss hitting it, but not much off center, so close to the center, how consistent is your distance and how consistent is your spin? Yeah. Right. Well, those two players have very different needs. You've yep. got a, a game improvement player. Uh, I need the ball to get up in the air. I might want it to draw a little bit. I want it to go as far as possible. And you've got a tour, tour player club 
who I want spin consistency, I want distance and consistency. Right. I, I want it lots they're, of they're different things. They're not so things. worried about distance. They're worried yeah. about consistency. So yeah. just look, when you're looking at those numbers, numbers, they are two very different parameters that we're looking and at. And then we have stopping power, which is uh, based on land angle and, and spin rate. Um, you know, that's really important to some people. I, you know, you might get a great club for distance, but if it doesn't stop, does that necessarily do any good? So you got to look at both those numbers. Uh, and then spin launch again is relative to you know all the different clubs in the in the group. And uh, if you need more spin to keep in the air more, great. If you're playing in the wind a lot and you want a lower spinning iron um, to control it better, then then you might look for a lower number there. Yeah, I like to think of that number in in the iron at least as the initial ball flight view. The yep. higher that spin launch number, you're going to see the ball pop off the face and like and okay, rise. It's up. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so well then, let's go a little deeper here now, yep. and let's have you run through some of the harder numbers to look at. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to run through this and have Tom explain the first bunch of numbers because there's tons of them. So basically, what we get from our uh, foresight is a bunch of numbers, right? So hundreds of thousands <coughs> of data points. Um, yeah, yeah. There, the uh, there's there's uh, this is the raw data. We always save the raw data after we process yeah, it. And this goes on forever and ever in every direction, pretty right? Much. I mean, it's just it's just endless. Yep. And then then uh, so we calc the calculates basic statistics, standard deviation for all the locations. The MCI is the mean confidence interval, 95%. That, that's a, 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 another measure of the, the variance of the shots. Um, the outliers, every time the, the Grubbs test comes up with an outlier, I want to know what it is because I want to look back and have total look at and, and see what was an outlier in there. The uh, outlier indices is just a way of the, the shot number of that one. It's, it's just a good way, again, to go back through the data and really figure out what's going on. Like an index. And it, like it's an index of, you know, shot one, shot two, shot three, and, and so that, that way. And then, then that gives us the mean data, and that's, we say, okay, this is good data. This is, you know, use these numbers. and. And then I turn it over to Mark, yep, and I yep. say, "Okay, so, they, so these so are the good numbers." numbers and I just I just deal with these last group, right? Then, uh, then I go to kind of analyzing all that data. So um, there's there's tons of data here. Obviously, it goes forever, but uh, we've hidden a bunch of cells, and there's tons of stuff that we don't want to show everybody. But uh, exactly how we calculate it. But this is how it's based uh, based on. So these are some of the important numbers we get. Um, obviously, you know, ball speed, launch angle, backspin, tilt axis for spin, uh, distance, uh, all these numbers. Uh, and I take all those numbers and grind them down into what we call our performance test, which is our overall rating for irons. This is an iron sheet, by the way. Uh, we look at slightly different things for woods, but this is how we do it. Um, so we look at our total carry distance. We look at ball speed as some of the parameters going into there. Uh, launch angle, because most players want to see it get up in the air better. Uh, we look at uh, the absolute value of how offline it is. Just and explain that, because I think that's a really simple one that you think, okay, I'm testing offline data. If you put yeah. offline data in it and you got one that goes 10 yards left and one that goes 10 yards right. One's right. a positive, one's a negative number. They cancel. It's zero. It looks yeah. great. It's a great that, club, right. so but it's really not. Get, <laughs> right, right. We just take the absolute value on how far offline it is and how far distance dropped off, basically. Yeah. It's a distance drop-off number. Uh, and that we kind of combine and we do some math on that. And that's where we come up with our ratings. And uh, we blanked out the numbers of what clubs these are, but these are all the different ratings that uh, the math produces. Zero to five ratings, right? Yeah, zero to five. And, and they're all good clubs for the most part. So they're all fours and most of the, most of that category, we haven't seen any really horrible stuff yet from any of the major manufacturers. Yeah. It's and, just, and, just and, good. And when you're looking at uh, performance, you know, a, a tour iron is not designed to perform in the same way that a game improvement iron is. So you, no. if you're going to see a different performance number, a lower performance number, it's just that maybe those irons are geared not around as forgiving. something else. I mean, else. Hit three quarters off the toe might be bad on one of these clubs, but for a tour player, he might want to play that club because he never hits it there. Exactly right. Right? So then we do our tour testing stuff. Um, most of what that looks like is... Um, really distance, um, consistency, uh, and spin, right? So this is just, this is the spin consistency. We take the standard deviation and that kind of changes the ratings on that. And then we get a number here, um, that gives us, you know, how consistent are these clubs? Um, you know, as you miss hit it off center, a quarter inch, right? So, um, that's really what it's looking for. How consistent are they in distance? Not so much distance. It's not actually looking at distance at all, really. Uh, and then we obviously get the distance numbers, which are just how far that thing carry on average in the center shots. Yep. Um, you can look at that to see which one club is the longest. Um, and then obviously stopping power. Uh, we're looking at landing angle here. Um, that's pretty important for stopping and also uh, spin rate. And this is a percentage of spin rate because you lose a certain amount, all the balls in the air. So it might start off at 5,000 RPMs when it lands, it's a little less than that. And that's based on how long it's in the air and 
if we do some other math on that. And that gives us a stopping power number. So, uh, and then we obviously got our spin launch number. Yep. So if you want to compare all these clubs and look at them, and we'll have these on the sheets, obviously, you know, those are the big four numbers you're looking at. Yep. That's how we explain them. And I think this gives uh, people a really good understanding of our process, our results, and finally is, you know, understanding cool clubs, right? So our fitters are going to use this. They're going to give our clientele the best experience because we've got the most, you know, neutral right. information possible geared towards what we think is interesting or useful data. And we're also going to open this up as best we can to the general public. Um, so check out our Cool Clubs website. We're going to host a lot of it there. And our partner website, uh, Golf Intelligence Agency, which is GIA.golf is one of their main ones. Right. Um, head there, delve into all the information. And we don't know what you want to see just yet, right? As, right, as a exactly. So we'll probably end up doing some tests that uh, people want to ask for. Um, you know, we did a test for Golf Digest recently, a stopping power of, uh, you know, a wedge on a three-quarter shot or something. Um, but, you know, yeah. uh, it would be interesting to do some tests that uh, the people want to know. Feedback is great. Something we haven't thought of. And, and, and this isn't the end, you know. This is no. the beginning, literally. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, keep, us, keep in touch with us. Stay in tune with all our social media, all of our websites. Thank you so much for you guys coming in and explaining all of this to everyone. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to this year being our best year yet. Yep, thanks. Absolutely. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, guys.